Hi everybody. So uh, welcome to uh, this uh, new stream. Uh, on this one, uh, what I'm going to focus on is something that I've been planning to do for a little bit of time. And uh, recently I've actually started playing uh, Dying Light again. And uh, one of the things that I have in my game is for some of the doors uh, and some of the areas, um, it's just a lock, lock picking system. So uh, this is a simple package, well not so simple, but it's a really nice package off of the uh, marketplace. And uh, <clears throat> what I've um, I've implemented that into uh, with the doors that I've made, and uh, so currently this is how it how it works. I'll show you real quick. I just wanted to uh, change the look of it. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, we have the door that's a, a, a of a type of lock picking door, and actually I need to find some lock picks. And for that I also need my backpack so I can access my inventory and let's see pick up lock picks so once you have uh, lock picks in your inventory which uh, I don't have a little icon for them right now um, you can uh, lock pick the door and right now this is how the uh, the default uh, uh, looks from uh, from the developer so um, you know functionality is there and all but I just want to make it look a little bit better. I guess that one broke. Eh, almost. Ah, oh, come on. Man, playing Dying Light just <laughs> earlier today was kind of a... Uh, um, so much easier to, to open the <laughs> doors. Maybe what I'll try and also do is right now you're only using like W, A, and D. You know W for the um, uh, the screwdriver and uh, A and D for the for the lock pick. So I might just change it hopefully to something just like uh, just like uh, Dying Light has where he um, you have the mouse. So basically you use the mouse to rotate the um, that screwdriver, and then of course A and D for the for the lockpick itself, instead of um, having W for the for the screwdriver. So um, yeah, let's take a look at it real quick. Uh, this is the this is the lockpicking uh, blueprint here, and um, it's it's pretty simple to replace these. Uh, it's it's a good start as well, but um, this this is pretty simple. You know, you have this. Uh, this inner lock which is um, you know just spinning around you gotta you know whenever you replace these you gotta make sure that you just follow what the de developer has so right now this is um, its pivot point is right there in the center uh, the outer rim doesn't do anything and um, then the screwdriver is right there at the tip of the screwdriver you can see uh, that's where um, um, uh, that's where its pivot point is. Of course, you gotta make sure you you follow the axes as well. And then the lock pick. The lock pick looks pretty good, so I might um, probably not gonna do anything about that. And uh, um, so this one is gonna stay the way it is. But uh, here's a quick reference of um, <laughs> of um, I mean, it's it's uh, way out of my uh, league to some extent. But uh, this is kind of what I'm uh, hoping to achieve. And uh, you know, just the uh, outer rim, you know, this the screwdriver. Um, if if I can, maybe I'll I'll try and uh, I'll try and do that as well. You know, maybe you know, um, uh, it maybe it turns out a little bit better. But um, but yeah, so this is kind of uh, you know a very nice looking little lock that um, we'll we'll try and see if we can reproduce it. Okay, well, so I'll let the music play for the rest of the stream and. Um, uh, we'll just work at it. It's going to be um, a little bit focused on uh, Blender today, and um, maybe using a little bit of Substance Painter to um, um, with that as well to texture it. So yeah.
And yes, I know I'm on 2.79. Um, I just got too lazy to <laughs> update to the latest one. But, uh, you know, in the end it does its what it's supposed to, right? Hey Gitesh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, not renders. Uh, this is a screenshot from. Uh, um, if you've played Dying Light, you'll probably recognize this. Um, I've wanted to. Um, not sure when when you when you joined the stream, but I wanted to revamp the 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 lock picking system that I have uh, to make this look a little bit better. So um, so yeah, that's what I was planning for the stream today. 
and just uh, uh, a little bit of a visual <laughs> visual work. So, how are you doing? I wanted to do it in Blender. Um, th th this could easily be done, I would think, in uh, Substance Designer as well. Uh, but I haven't worked with it as much, so uh, I might be fumbling around quite a bit um, to to to, <laughs> to the amount of uh, of how much I remember of um, of that. I mean, it could be fun, and uh, if you know, if anyone is interested, a kind of a this is a, a free flowing stream. So uh, if anybody is interested in in uh, giving that a shot as well, is just because I could. I could see some of these items being done actually fairly easy in Substance Designer just to get the because I mean the, the the biggest thing that I want to get out of this is height map slash normal right uh, so that way when you bring it into Painter you can um, you can get you know kind of the cavity and um, um, what the curvature and everything else that uh, the generators rely on to apply the wear and tear on the material so. Um, th though you can't you can't make the the screwdriver in <laughs> in, uh, in um, substance designer, but I um, I mean I'm not entirely sure actually. Let me take a quick peek and see if I have a better screwdriver in because uh, I I know I have something in here, but um, I'm not entirely sure if it's in any. Yeah, no, they're all out of. Um, um, unfortunately, they they're just. I, this is the only screwdriver that I have right now. So, it um, the one the one advantage of doing it this way is that I can like on the same UV map I can like plop the screwdriver as well. So um, so that could be that could be something to think about. But uh, but yeah, let's let's continue on with this. Um, I always enjoy doing things in Blender so we'll see how this turns out um, I'm, um, the only thing that I'm concerned with is you know with 3d modeling when you have a lot of uh, circular surfaces like this uh, it might be a little tough in in cutting it out so we'll see how this goes all right let's continue so I'm gonna try and get the centerpiece of this going uh, that's kind of the toughest one to see and how that's gonna how that's gonna look. So um, let's. I'm gonna add a circle here, um, and I think this one can. And this is gonna be the high poly anyway, so I can uh, I can go crazy with it. So this one can go around here, and uh, from that, these three, I can probably pull them down like so, and scale them out. I think that should do it at least for this section. So yeah, like I said, the, my main concern is now that I have these, um, is you know kind of cutting it into it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I I love um, I love Blender. Uh, so that that's I mean that's the other thing that I want to go continue going with it. The only thing is I don't have anything. Uh, free and open source when it comes to you know doing like the the texturing and the painting and all that so for that I'm gonna default oh actually you know what one thing that I've and I haven't done this is uh, the uh, Quixel mixer I know they have some kind of a thing where you can paint stuff so maybe we'll give that a try you know it's um, like I said it's pretty on stream is pretty unstructured so um, bear with me <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this. So this one, um, I'm gonna try and make it uh, an extruded up, uh, just like that. And um, let's see how we can. Um, I'm gonna separate it, and I'm gonna see if I can uh, use the boolean to cut it out. Um, I'm not sure how well that's gonna work, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, it's just because this one has um, you know has these circles so that's that's my only concern so let's see uh, oh well actually that that boolean turned out pretty pretty decent 
not too shabby. Of course, there's going to be some issues when I apply it, but um, since this is my high poly, I'm not going to care as much. So let's take a look. I'm going to add some stuff to this, especially like around here, and maybe this this uh, little lip here, and um, we'll see how that turns out. Okay. Um, so yeah, my apologies again. Uh, this is not um, I've have not done this prior to the stream, so I'm I'm uh, as fresh to this as you are. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so actually this one here, I'm trying to think what shape might be better for it. Uh, uh, just because... Uh, maybe, you know what, I'll keep it like this. And... Um, I'm going to try and see if I can do a, a... Like a bridge the gap between these. I only need to make this once. So, let's take a look. Um, subdivided and subdivided again. So I'm going to try and follow the contour of this little, little thing here. Alright, let's take a look and we'll do the same thing on this side. And I mean, again, I think if people are using the, the newer um, um, Blender, I think some of the shortcuts are still the same from what I'm hearing. It's just that with this one, I have quite a few other plugins installed, and I just didn't, never really got around to uh, to bringing them into the new Blender. Uh, I'm not really happy with this. I'm trying to do like a kidney kind of shape, but this is not really... Um, not really coming together as as that kidney shape type uh, um, type thing here. Um, trying to figure out how I can do that best. I'm gonna try something here. So let's unite these and. Um, Oh, you know what? My mistake is that I'm trying to... I've, I've rotated these around, so I should not have done that from the get-go. Um, so... And if the music is too loud, let me know. I can, I can tone it down. So let's take a look. I'm going to try and do it on a vertical thing here. So this one and this one... Uh, so let's see, I was hoping that I can, um, uh, I can do a bridge loop here, but I'm not sure why, oh, I think it needs to be a face, so... So we can try and do it like this, is what I'm hoping for. Uh, and then with like proportional editing. Uh, let's see, what's my axis? should be in the x-axis. Right, so this is kind of what I'm going for, so to speak. That's probably a little too strong. That's too... So, you know, something like this. First, let me scale it up. Oh, just a little bit. It's kind of throwing the circles off bounds, but... Uh, It's probably not going to have to be perfect, but, um, you know, we can try and get it within that general vicinity. Uh, 
and at the same time you know I mean I don't have to really copy this all all the way so maybe I'll just keep it like this and just keep it vertical but kind of keep the references to these positions all right so let's see if uh, extrude these these ones out All right, so those are pretty decent cuts. And uh, let's add some bolts to these. Uh, I think it's under mesh and... Um, was it under mesh? What was the, where was the bolt at? Unless I need... Let's see, maybe I need to enable that... Uh, was it extra meshes, extra objects? I think this could be it. Uh, books, so I have the books. Um. Oh, hey, get this. Yeah, I, I'm 40. So I'm, I'm old <laughs> in terms of everything, especially when it comes to game development. But, you know, you're never too old to do stuff that you like, so that's how I look at it. Is it like a bolt something in here? Come on, just go wave. Uh, bolt. Bolt factory, there we go. Alright, so hopefully this might uh, bring something in. Bolt. Not sure where it got added. It's right there. So let's take a look. Uh, this is going to be a. I'm going to try and go for a Phillips. Uh, bit diameter, maybe make it a little bit bigger, just like that. Let's see, maybe. I think there's like a. There's a bolt that's round. So it's a bolt head dome. Alright, I think that might be better. So let's change this down to to about there. Alright, that's that's pretty good. I'm not going to use hard ops because that's not a free, at least to my knowledge, it's not a free um, package. So let's put that about there. You know, one of the things that I actually have been checked and how I feel bad about it for like I started, I started going with this is I haven't checked mega scans to see if there's any any locks in there because um duh but um but yeah we'll we'll uh we'll continue on with this and um uh, I'll take a look I'll take a look and see if um uh, if there's anything in there cuz I I'd, I'd like to play with um um with Quixel mixer and see and see if we can get the the baking to to work somehow okay uh, so now what I want to do is kind of the little indentation around here and um, we'll see how that's gonna look in a f and also this thing that kind of goes into the face of the um, where the key goes right okay so for that I think what I might do, I'm going to duplicate these just in case I don't end up with what I want. And I'm going to apply the boolean here. So let's go ahead and apply the boolean. Alright, 
right, so the mesh is actually sort of clean. It's not perfect, but um, uh, this is where the, the area that I'm going to try and apply is another boolean for the um, um, you know for this for especially for this area so I'm going to start with this and uh, and go from there so let's see how that's going to look and start with a cube Excuse me. All right. Uh, I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna delete the uh, one face. So that way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and uh, just trace it along to follow this shape. here okay yeah right they always do extrude like that And, um, you know, the more I think about this, uh, the advantage, I think, of doing it uh, through Blender is also that um, you get the meshes, because you're going to end up needing a mesh that would, that would move in that, um, in that lock print, uh, lockpick blueprint. So I think this could also, could also help. Okay, so this is kind of a, a weird looking shape. But let's see if uh, how to, how it's going to cut into the surface of the of this. Oh wow, that actually cut into it pretty good. Uh, my only concern is when uh, when I'm gonna do this is applying the bevels, <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out, and uh, you know trying to make this a little bit high poly. All right, so we have that. Um, let's try and see. If, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do the circle around here, but I'm gonna give that a shot. Okay, so. Um, Circle. So it's basically going to be this inner piece here. It's kind of the I'm not sure what they call it in like locksmith locksmithing uh, aptitudes, but it's the the spinning uh, center where you put the key in. Hey Mario, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Um, so before I do that, what I might end up doing is insetting this. Uh, so I'm gonna, if I can, oh no, this has to be a face. So in order for you to be able to inset it, and then delete the face. So I might just make this a little bit bigger, kind of like that. And uh, extrude. All 
And one thing that I like to do, especially in Blender, is uh, turn on ambient occlusion. That way, at least you get some ideas of, you know, with the shading of where you at. And now this one should actually cut into this, but it's not really doing it properly. I wonder why. So I'm going to try and rename this to something else. cut out. Alright, so now yeah I think it was like overlapping with this one so maybe that that was the, the issue. Okay so it's kind of turning into um, something that sort of looks like a, a key or a lock alright so then let's add a little bit more detail so I'm gonna try and uh, kinda cheat a little bit just because I have this already in place I want to get this out of rim here. to it. So let's do this. Oh hey, I get this. Yeah, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, hopefully the next uh, stream is going to be a little bit more interesting. I'm trying to, uh, you know, to prep for, for some of these a little bit better, but um, um, didn't get so far in it today. But, um, but yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, man. All right, so now that we have these in place, um, I'm gonna try and see if I can add a bevel. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I'm wondering if I can place it right before all the booleans. If that's gonna work. Yeah, that worked out pretty nice. Yeah, there's a nice bevel going on around these edges, so it should help out with the baking. And actually there is, uh, where is it? Bevel. Bevel. I didn't like this section here so well when I put it all the way at the top. So let's try and move it down a couple. Alright, so it looks like all the areas are beveled, except for this one here. I guess all the way at the end does work better. I'm not sure why it didn't, work the f didn't seem to work the first time. Alright, so let's apply some, uh, some more segments to this to make it look a little nicer. Turn on smooth shading. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty good I would think. I think it might need a smaller width. Kinda like that. Um not entirely sure why this section here appears um smooth same with that one but everything in here doesn't I 
let's see if I try to uh, apply a subdivision surface. Uh, let's see if this one would work better at the top. Yeah, that's the issue with these circular forms. That they don't turn out so good. Uh, let me try something real quick. I want to make it so that uh, kind of this is split into like an actual circle, at least um, s to some extent. So let's try and subdivide these. And we have one, two, three, that's good. Yeah, that didn't seem to help much, unfortunately. The weird thing is, let's see if I... Oh, I think I might have an idea. So, hey, for all, yeah, this is Blender, uh, the old Blender. <laughs> I just never got around to um, um, to go into uh, to the latest. So, um, <laughs> if if anybody um, is gonna hate me for this, I'm sorry. But um, but yeah, it does look different. It's um, uh, uh, what do people call it like uh, vintage <laughs> so uh, so yeah I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to make a lock here and um, just for my uh, lock picking system and I'm getting some inspiration from um, um, from uh, dying light I was just playing it today and uh, I thought oh you know that's a nice look and I'm trying to um, I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time and see if I can I get something done in Blender first before starting to scour the internet for a um, um, or maybe you know uh, or bridge I'm not sure if Megascan has any of these locks I actually haven't checked so um, I, I wanted to give it a shot first in, uh, in Blender uh, the only issue that I'm running into is right now a lot of the stuff here looks pretty good. The um, the problem is that this uh, kind of the, the the shading here is not applied properly. So, and I was also trying to to do it in a free, completely free type of type of a way. So, uh, not necessarily relying on um, like Substance Painter or Designer. And so that's why I might I might try and see if there's anything from um, from Quixel if this doesn't doesn't turn out uh, well and um, it's 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 almost there you know I'm trying to work with some booleans in here and I haven't done a lot of uh, um, a lot of 3D modeling lately but um, you know I'm trying to get some indentations here like if you look at the image. Uh, you know, you got all these indentations around uh, around the side of the uh, the mechanism, but um, you know, the more I try to think about how to fix these, and especially I'm I'm having some hard times when it comes to these circles within circles, and then cutting out and cutting them cutting them out, like especially you know, like the geometry is not is not great, you know, like the, the topology, and um, and that's why I'm not very. Uh, <laughs> Pretty happy with it, so to speak. So um, I'm I'm trying to think of of ways to. Um, I mean, it doesn't look look 
you know terrible and uh, and we can definitely get um, you know have a shot at it but as you can see you know there's a lot of what I'm gonna end up with some shading issues when I bake this you know like you got these weird lines over here and um, you know the more I look at it the more I hate it <laughs> um, one thing I want to try is um, Ah, oh, come on, why would you go into weight paint? Uh, not sculpt mode. Let's try um, uh, edit. So this is one face and um, I would like to be able to um, um, you know to get those booleans to all work you know look consistent that's that's what I'm hoping for so let's take a look uh, this edge oh okay <laughs> yeah I'm not sure why uh, hopefully the quality is is okay I've um, I've looked up some changes that I could do um, uh, to um, uh, to OBS to get some uh, some better um, um, some better quality. So hopefully that 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 translates is what I'm hoping. So I'm trying to clean up this mesh a little bit. Um, 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 my my hope is that it it will help with uh, oh perfect uh, that it will help with. The, um, with the topology of, of things. Um, can't say that I'm holding my breath, but um, you know, see, this is kind of the issue. Like this section here is, is flat shading, but this one is looking good. So um, even with transforming this into, uh, I mean, it's actually not so much of a circle, but um, That's I was hoping that you know, kind of transforming that into a circle w would help. But now looking at it, I think um, um, I think I don't really need this boolean here because if I turn this into a circle, into a proper circle, and that means. Um, Like duplicating these edges here. Yeah, it's never gonna be a circle, man. I I, I had to pick the the one a a tough a tough 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 shape to do during the stream. Um. So yeah, I mean, because you know what my thought my hope was that I could insert inset this face and do it again. And then you know extrude this one down. So so see like that bevel looks nice over there. It's only this little this this guy here that's um, giving me a you know a heartache <laughs> right now. Um, because if that guy wouldn't be around, it would look mostly okay. Though that's the problem. This is like um, um, this is some issues here. Hey Mario. So um, well, I do work outside of uh, of when I when I do live streaming. Uh, a lot of it is you know kind of just um, you know boring work. So that's the only thing that. Um, I um, sometimes I have trouble with is uh, figuring out what I'm going to stream that's going to make the stream somewhat interesting. And um, so this week, what I've done is mostly focus on optimizing, and um, uh, so optimizing kind of just getting the draw calls and uh, going over 60 frames per second uh, in my project, actually in game time. So. Um, 
and uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to hit that target of uh, right around 2,000 draw calls and below 10 million polys and I'm I'm actually almost there I'm if, if I think I might be there there are some areas of the game that I might be um, of, of the world that might be going over 10 million but um, uh, with with the current selection that I have for you know vegetation rocks filler assets um, uh, these kind of uh, human livable areas I'm I'm right around uh, um, eight to nine million uh, triangles and right around two thousand twenty two hundred uh, draw calls which which is good so um, uh, with with a constant 60 and some areas 70 frames per second which I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with and that's in the editor so you know assuming that maybe it will work better once it's in um, once it's once, once it's built but um, you know slowly I'm getting close to making uh, making a build and excuse me hopefully if people are interested you know test it out and uh, you know kind of uh, complain about performers or, or let me know how it works for them so um, so yeah slowly but surely um, you know what I'm gonna try and do uh, yeah that didn't really do much um, yeah this 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 needs quads and it's so it's so tough to get quads when you have um, when you have a bunch of circular shapes in here, but um, you know this is this is kind of going to be iteration one. What I want to do is, uh, since I mentioned, I I want to try and use um, um, mixer to see if um, I know the advert or advertised or um, the the painting. The one thing that I'm not sure with Mixer is um, if um, if it has the ability to bake maps. That that's one thing that I haven't tried yet. So I'll, oh, I guess we'll see how that's gonna work out. So first, uh, let's add. And I can't remember where did I move this. It's on layer two. So this would be my starting point for. Uh, to bake the maps um, onto this and then I'll cut out the um, you know I'll cut out the spinning part of it because I mean that's the only thing that uh, you have to worry about this the spinning circle and um, so yeah let's let's take a look let's try and see if um, um, if this is gonna uh, work in any any sense of fashion so let uh, I'm gonna try and export this to um, let's see what would this be I think I can put it in doors and maybe lockpick so let's take a look at this so this is going to be uh, lockpick low poly and then one all of this stuff yeah so right now as you can see it's it's not totally perfect uh, it's it I mean I c it could have been better if I would have used you know her vertex vertex count on the circles uh, but we'll, we'll see how it how this turns out I'm, I'm, I'm now actually I'm curious myself <laughs> uh, but one thing that I do want to do is uh, at least uh, I want to place these below the um, so in order to bake this properly my hope is that they would have to be below the surface of uh, the low poly so let's see and this is going to be the high poly And that's the only uh, unfortunate thing is if I can't bake it in Mixer, um, I have not used. I think there was like a 
uh, an X normal or something like that. Um, yeah, no, I don't want to do it right now. Uh, I think it's called X normal, where you can. It's a free, uh, uh, free package that you can bake the normals in. So the the, the texture. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to use the textures from Quixel. You know, like uh, I know they have some uh, some of those. Uh, like for example in Substance Painter you would have generators right that would add the the edge wear and that kind of stuff and uh, using the 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 Quixel, the Quixel uh, metals and stuff like that so I'm gonna call this lockpick alright let's see so I think there was something uh, there was a way to um, now it's also a matter of me remembering how I did this last time. Uh, let's see, I know there was a way to like load your mesh in here. Uh, display performance, I don't need that. Uh, not surface. Uh, Like preview mesh. Uh, it's just a preview mesh. I know there was there was a way to add uh, uh, add your object in here. Oh man, I, this is one of the things that I haven't really prepped for, as you can tell. That um, um, you would you would be able to use like for example so your mix to texture. Okay, so that might be something, but uh, how do I import a um, import custom surface? Why would it only have custom surface? I can't import a, um, a 3D object? That's so weird. Asset Manager. I haven't used this. Apparently, it doesn't really do anything. Oh, this is such a bummer. I was really hoping that. Uh... Oh yeah. So generate normals. That would be something. But generate normals for what? Yeah. Let's take a quick peek at. Uh... I know they have a couple of videos on uh, on this. So uh, 3D. Uh, what is it? Quick saw. I quick give this a quick peek. Okay, they have a tutorial from a year ago where you actually you bake it, you do everything in Blender and not in um, inside Mixer itself, which that's a bummer. It's it's always the preparing assets. Um, And that's why I would think the generate normals is still an experimental. Oh, that's a bummer. I wish we could have done this um, in um, in here. I'm wondering if I still have X normal. Oh, that's a bummer. I thought I did. Uh, let me give that a try. Maybe we can f maybe we can find it somewhere. And uh, and and try it out. The only problem still is that um, I um, how do I import the asset into into Mixer.
So if anybody's interested, this is the video that I'm looking at. And um, it's it doesn't really it just jumps into Quixel and that's it. So Baking them, baking ambient occlusion, curvature, setting up a cage. So yeah, you can definitely do all of this in uh, um, in Blender. You know, baking normal map. This is actually a really good tutorial, so I might just have a have a peek at it. But um, the one trouble that I'm having is nowhere in the video. I guess you would have to go through it. I'm not seeing the where the um, um, where the import into um, how the import into um, Quixel Mixer is done because it just jumps straight into Mixer. So exporting. Okay, yeah. Select that object. I get that. And magic mixer. What? Hmm. That could actually be an interesting, uh, interesting thing to do for a tutorial. Kind of do it from. Because um, I hate when they break break things up that way. That's I'm, I'm not sure what that is all about. Why they do that? Um, and not have something cohesive. I mean, it's definitely useful for for baking that, but then why well, cut it off? Uh, um, right there. I mean, the good thing is, I guess there is uh, there's a follow up tutorial to that, but again, it's on a separate tutorial. And why? So this is nice. There we go. We have a a way to import the mesh. So that one was done, but I'm not sure if they have if they do anything as far as um, I think they still do things in Blender. Let's see, yeah. So they import the normal or, or everything else from from an external baking thing. Unfortunately, and I uh, this is not very recent per se, but um, couldn't find anything else related to that. So um, it does apply some really nice. I mean, I, I definitely like how this this stuff is applied, you know. And you can uh, use masks, which is nice. But I was hoping that uh, we can do this all in. Uh, uh, we can do the baking also. So let's see, uh, where was the, um, there's a section where they look at uh, importing the FBX. Oh, so it's under setup. And uh, plane, we want a 3D asset. So let's load our 3D asset from somewhere else I hope I think you'd be able to load it once oh. no I want to be able to load stuff from I guess you have to export it to where the library is. So let's see, where is the library in here? Let's try and create a new folder and see if this might get us going. Let's export this into three 
this 3D where the library is at. Lockpick. Sometimes, oh, uh, my my mistake. Instead of going with the 3D assets, it's a custom model. Uh, okay. Why would you even go through all that trouble to separate them like that? And let's take a look. We have this in lockpick. See if this gets loaded to begin with. Um, okay, so that did, that's good. Now, the only thing is that, um, um the generate normals is I'm not sure if it's usable or if you can do anything with it Right now it kind of looks like I'm not sure if that relies on another um, set being imported, but um, but what I'll do is, and I think that might be useful. Um, oh, the mirror modification. So, uh, Farrell, I haven't done any mirror uh, modifications to that mesh. The only trouble that I'm having right now is um, that um, uh, I can't figure out if this generate normals from what. I mean, you would generate normals, I would think, based on a bake, but there's no real option to import uh, the second mesh, you know, like the high poly. And from what I can tell from uh, from looking at um, um, on some of these, you know, just quickly going through these videos on uh, on mix on uh, on Quixel, most of them are are old to begin with. Um, but um, but there's that's why it's experimental <laughs> uh, for 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 you know proper reason, which is kind of a bummer. But um, I guess you would have to do the the baking inside Blender uh, for for a full um, kind of free experience, or um, hello Ganesh, welcome. Or the other the other option is, and this is what I wanted to look at, is trying to find X normal. Uh, I know I had it a while back, but. Uh, I'm wondering if it still if it still works. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, Cause that'd be interesting to see to kind of get this um, you know kind of get this through, uh, but. Um, it, yeah, it's it's learned by experimenting, and Ganesh, yeah, well, uh, welcome to the stream. This is um, I'm not sure if you've seen any other other videos on my channel, but this is a little bit different than the others. Um, I um, I was hoping to make a um, 
a lock, uh, an actual lock for my lock picking mechanism. Uh, right now, it it's not looking its best. You know, it's kind of just the default set that the uh, package came with, which looks great. But um, I think we can do a little bit better. And I was trying to do it. Um, um, how should I say? To um, um, as free as possible. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. Welcome to the stream. So I'm I'm trying to do it as as free as possible. Uh, you know, like using Quixel Mixer, and oh, so no, this is um. So in my project, uh, I have um. Uh, th th there would be a mini game, right? So when you when you have a a, a locked door that needs lock picking, so um. I've enjoyed like the lock lock picking mechanism in Dying Light if you've played Dying Light, and or Fallout, yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, but you know, um, this doesn't look bad, but I think we can do a little bit better. So, uh, my plan was to do something like this. This is. This is how it looks inside of Dying Light. So I, I definitely like the design and the fact that you know this section of the lock spins. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Um, and uh, yeah, so my hope was that I could uh, could try and do that uh, as 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 free as I can. You know, so using just um, stuff that you don't have to pay for, right? <laughs> I mean, once you, of course, if you use Unreal. So, you know, like uh, the Quixel Mixer, the, you know, Quixel Textures, and so on. And, um, you know, I'm a little stuck with the fact that uh, I can't really bake inside of, uh, inside uh, the mixer, or at least I have, I don't have the, uh, the knowledge to do that. Um, so well, what I'm going to try and do is uh, I'm going to try and use X normal. I've I've used it I've used it in the past and um uh, I was able to generate the maps from it. Um And I actually don't can say that I really like this uh, 3D Max. Seems seems a little legit. So let me try and install it somewhere somewhere else. At least it seems to be updated, so hopefully I'm not going to get some kind of a virus out of this. <laughs> um, if it if it even works. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, to um, bake the normals and bring them in in um, into Quixel. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Exactly. So bring them into Quixel, and um, uh, use um, you know, use some of their textures. You know, like metal textures that um, um, I mean, DirectX R. That seems pretty pretty okay. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that I strongly suggest to everybody you know whenever you work on something use version control you know git what have you it saved uh, it saved me a bunch of hassle so um, so yeah definitely something to use uh, now I'm using X normal because I haven't done a lot of baking I mean I've done baking a few years ago in in blender and um, um it worked out pretty well but um it it definitely worked out better in x normal so um
let's try this out see if um, see if this still works so let's load the high definition meshes hopefully I can recall everything that that I uh, that I was doing um, So I think I've up, up, uh, let's do this one. So basically, this is how it looks right now for the high poly, and uh, this is actually the high poly, not the other one. This is the low poly, and it also the other thing that this this application wants, as far as I recall, and yeah, you'd see that this is not perfect. This is pretty far from perfect. This mesh, uh, and that's why uh, if this doesn't work out, I'll just try and see if I can find something online and just try and hack at it a little bit. But um, and also you know try and find something free. So. To, if I recall correctly, what this also needs is a cage. So I'm going to try and make something around these. Hopefully, they're all going to be placed where they're supposed to. Alright, so let's export this FBX as lockpick. Cage. All right, so let's take a look back into X Normal. Have the high definition mesh. Um, where was that being loaded from? Add meshes. Uh, let's see. That was in. From here. Alright, so I think this one was the high poly. Oh, and that looks kind of terrible when exported. Yeah, it looks like, unfortunately, with this, huh, if I was to import the high poly. sure why but uh, it exported these as well so what I'm gonna need is just this one this one and this one so I'm gonna try and do this again Right, so let's go back to X normal, and now let's do the high poly mesh first. All right, there's the high poly. There's let's load the low poly. And baking options. Uh, I know there was a way to load. Can remember where you would add the cage. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's not maybe it's not needed anymore. I'm wondering. Oh, browse external cage file. There we go. So let's add the cage. Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, I think it got added. External cage file, there you go. So baking options. I'm gonna try and bake the normal first and see um, see how that turns out. And I'm gonna keep it small for now. It's, it's gonna be okay if you keep it small. But uh, let's do the output file. And the output file is gonna be of type, uh, I'm just gonna do a PNG. So let's do lock pick underscore norm normal. Let's see what kind of mess this creates. Oh shoot, yeah that's part of it. 
<laughs> oh yeah uh, exactly well so it's gonna uh, it's gonna uh, the music is gonna be from the background or I mean uh, not the background but like kind of the ambient sound I guess all right so one thing that I do need to do is um, this guy does not like it needs to have uh, triangulated faces so let's try and do this so we have the low poly or the Jaws theme <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely an option uh, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this and move it to 6 and let's see I'm gonna try and apply why is that skipping apply okay anyways I'm gonna try and apply all my um, so that I can do that. I think these are already triangulated. Yeah, they need to do another Jaws movie. Um, I mean, I know people are, are hating uh, some of the Jaws movies, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like it. Do I need to reload these? Uh, so uh, gonna sh uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. It's um, um, it's kind of an adventure, uh, uh, an adventure, uh, not necessarily survival, you know, because there's no survival elements per se, like uh, you know, building bases and that kind of stuff. But it's a single player game. It's uh, story based, you know, no no multiplayer, and um, it's. Um, um, you know, once you know, once I give up with this, I mean, I'm gonna, you know, spend a little bit more time. I don't want to extend the stream for too long, but uh, I can show you a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the world and the mechanics, or at least as much as I can in the game. Uh, and um, so yeah, basically what happens is, uh, you know, just like with a lot of other games, the entry sequence is with uh, you crashing with an airplane. It's you know, you're by yourself, and um, once you uh, you uh, you know you get up from the crash, you you can't remember. You know you have to find out how you got there. So um, so that's where the the story starts, and you have to connect with some of the survivors in this location. Which you know the first survivors that you're going to meet are going to be friendlies, and they will give you uh, the missions that will help you figure out uh, what happened in in that place. So and how what your role was. Uh, so let's try doing this again. So I'm gonna get the high poly. I'm not sure if I need to like um, um, so then low poly. Let's see if I can. Oh hey, there you go. That actually the bake worked. <laughs> It just looks hideous. Um, yes, so it's a single-player adventure. Um, it, it is indeed. And um, you know, I wanted to make it single-player because that's the types of games that I play. And um, uh, that's um, basically uh, what I like playing. Oh, oh! I, I think I, <laughs> I guess the problem was with um, it might have been with the cage. So, um, so yeah. Hopefully that makes it interesting. Uh, the combat is uh, limited to uh, you know stealth takedowns as far as melee attacks. Um, right now there's. Um, as far as uh, distance ranged attacks, I only have a pistol implemented, but that was kind of the the prototyping for me to implement other weapons as well. So hopefully, I'll have some something like a more distant uh, type weapon. And uh, one thing that I've always wanted to have, this is depending on whether I can find it, is a crossbow, uh, because everything else is pretty simple to animate. The crossbow, uh, I like the fact that it's silent, and uh, you know, every I've played a couple of games um, that I remember that have crossbows, and I 
I think that's a very cool weapon. So um, I'm hoping that it might work, but uh, but we'll see. All right, so let me see where was my. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to use this one. Oh, the Easter egg Wilson. That's that's what you meant. I was kind of thinking. I was trying to. Uh, sorry for not replying, but I didn't really know what to say because I couldn't really think of uh, where the Wilson reference is coming from. So my apologies. All right. So this is cage. Let's try and uh, reload the cage. You can definitely tell that I have not used this. Uh, in a minute. <laughs> so, um, Gunish, yeah, hopefully that uh, kind of gives you a little bit of a, ba a background. Um, <laughs> yeah, that movie, exactly. Uh, what is it? Uh, what was the name of it? Um, um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Ah, oh, come on, what the hell? The cage mesh inside does not have the same number as that. Oh, shoot, this actually wants it to be... Um, well, that sucks. Castaway, yeah, there you go, Gunesh, that's perfect, exactly. Cast that That's what it is, it's Castaway. Um, well, this is such a bummer. I was hoping that I can use the cage, but I guess I need to also have uh, this guy be... Um, kind of the same amount of polys. One thing that I uh, actually, I think, might cause issues is <coughs> the normals were, were flipped on that one. I, I think so. Let's try this again. So I'm going to export this as the low poly. And uh, this is going to be the cage. And let's see. The one that I've exported is this one. The normals seem fine. So let's see if I can uh, reset external cage. Ah, that's still horrible. Ah, this is such a bummer. I was I was really hoping that I could um, could get this in. Hmm. Well, anyways, that was a that was a good attempt. Well, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at uh, bridge and see if there's anything in there that's usable. And well, I I think this could could be a pretty interesting t tutorial um, to try and just bring uh, things into one place where you uh, it's you know probably with a simpler shape but uh, you know create the low poly create the high poly uh, you know bake it and bring them into mixer and texture it and not and have that in one uh, video and so hopefully that might make sense. But anyways, let's take a look. I'm wondering if they have anything in here. I'm not sure if they do, but um, I'm hoping maybe something on the door or um, maybe there's a, there's a lock or something on one of these doors that can be used. I'm not entirely sure. The other nice thing about um, free stuff on the internet, another resource that I use is uh, textures.com. So textures.com has quite a few things, and you can actually find stuff. Uh, they, they do have uh, stuff that is free. So um, let's look for a lock. So, you know, stuff like this or stuff like that, but the only problem with these is, you know, kind of the texturing of it. So, um, yeah, see, this is this is actually quite interesting, but um, 
but yeah, it would it would come down to how it would look when you do the um, um, oh yeah, that's that's actually a great uh, great great suggestion. So Tumblr, hmm, nothing there. But yeah, that, I I totally get what you're saying. Hmm. Let's see. I know that uh, Quixel at least has some pretty high quality um, looking items, and that doesn't really doesn't really work. Um, door. And yeah, this one doesn't have a lock. And yeah, the the thing with textures.com is you get the uh, you get the base color, but then you have to uh, uh, to do the roughness and the normal, and uh, that's that's my only issue with it. Um, and this one doesn't really have any lockers on it, which is a bummer. So that's that's door. And I'm I am searching in all the categories. For whatever reason, I thought there were more doors with with uh, Quixel, but uh, but uh, maybe not. Yeah, there's quite a few on Textures.com. But um, but yeah, again, that's that's the only difficulty that um, you don't have the hmm. well. This is such a bummer, guys. I'm I'm really sorry about that. I was. Uh, I was kind of really hoping to get this uh, uh, get this going and have that. Um, yeah, no worries, Ganesh. Uh, you know, have that work. <laughs> Let's see, what's the? Uh, that's an interesting little thing, but you know, considering the texture, it's probably very low definition, and you know, it's a scan, so it's not gonna look so well. You know, once you look at it up close. Hmm. I was really hoping for a little bit of a better bake from. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that happened. That um, uh, that the bake with X normal X normal was um, uh, turned out so hideous for the normal. Um, let me try and uh, I'm not gonna give up on this just yet. Let me try and see if um, I'm gonna try with a simpler shape. So I'm gonna get rid of the cage. Hide the, I'm going to hide the image, um, background images. I want to see if, if the bake really works and um, it, there's something wrong that I'm doing. So I'm going to try something simple. So this is going to be um, our, um, our block. And I'm going to duplicate this and just move it below the surface a little bit and extrude down. Let's also see, there's also a fact of uh, where the normals are pointing. So this one's pointing the right way. So I'm going to try and do. Um, just some simple modeling here, like insetting it a couple of times and uh, getting some of these surfaces extruded down just to get some kind of some kind of shape in there and maybe add a uh, bevel. There you go. Let's 
let's make it smooth and make this width a little smaller just like that all right so that can that can be a pretty decent shape that my hope is would get baked properly so let's do it's already on FBX export so this is the high poly then uh, this would be the low poly so let's try it into without the um, low definition mesh so let's actually I'm gonna remove mesh I'm not sure what it does when you reset the cage so let's add this is the low definition okay again with that gotcha um, let's try like this export FPX low poly Can re why can't you reset the file itself? Only sports trying to the and the mesh, but which mesh? Why can't it just say the because I'm already specifying the meshes, but Let's see maybe it's this one. I mean, this is an end gone. Um, uh, yeah, actually, you're right. I mean, it could be this side as well. So um, the only the only trouble with that is that with um, and this is why I hate circles. Oh my god, I hate circles so much <laughs> that um, all these end gones they um, they're very tough to um, especially when you have like a bevel to um, and actually let's try this I'm gonna apply the bevel here and I'm gonna do the triangulation afterwards so let's try it like that I hate applying the modifiers uh, <clears throat> excuse me before uh, before exporting these so that's why it's um, uh, let's see so I have this one and I think this one is already done I'm gonna export it one more time because I would like to try and do it without the cage especially when you bake onto a plane you know you're not baking into a the 3D objects, so I'm not sure why I would need a cage. So that's why I'm hoping that it's just going to look at it. Um, so I'm going to uh, remove these and add them again. So this is going to be the high poly, then the low definition. Let's add this one again for the low. Yeah, and it still looks hideous. <laughs> I mean, these sections look kind of good, but um, everything else. Let's take a look. What what else do we have for like uh, baking option? Is the edge padding too big? Yeah, this is this is such a bummer. I'll have to um, I'll have to do a little bit more of a, of digging into this, and uh, you know prep a little bit better once I do the um, the tutorial. But um, yeah, anyways, I I was hoping you know at the same time that I could you know default onto onto Quixel 
and find like a, a lock or a door or anything uh, anything like that but yeah there's there's nothing of that kind of a kind of a thing and um, I mean the one thing that I do remember is some time ago but this is using um, substance designer unfortunately uh, or su uh, substance painter sorry it's um, let's actually take a look at that real quick you know I'm not gonna uh, I just wanted to, ch to check on the baking to see if if the baking works in the um, in substance painter and again this is a very old old version or if it's just um, um, something that I'm doing wrong so let's take a look and see where that uh, thing was at so lock picking so we have the low poly okay there it is so now if we were to do the baking in here and let's take a look at the high definition let's see how this looks wakes that that doesn't do anything not enough data in the high poly why would there be not enough data in the high poly I mean even even the little blender opening app still shows the high poly I'm going to try and extrude that this way and try and do it like that, like a, like a, um, one of those dials. As you can see, I'm a little bit more comfortable with um, um, substance painter. <laughs> I've used it quite a bit more. So there's the normal but it still doesn't uh, explain why it doesn't really you know bake things onto you know they're one within the other are pointing the right way there's the high poly I'm going to try and unwrap it like this though it shouldn't matter and there's the low poly Poly, and there's with the new UVs and baking the normal. Let's try loading this one more time. Okay, that looks a little bit better. It looks like there is some baking going on. Maybe I just need to extend the. Uh, there's like this thing called the max frontal distance and a rear distance. So that baking worked, but um, uh, 
but yeah, you would have to have substance painter. So um, let's actually try out and see if Mixer can, uh, uh, if we can apply. Let's. I'm gonna try and export the textures here, and at least try out try out Mixer. Okay, so we have, um, oh, actually I did not export what I wanted to export. So let's export textures, and this is going to have to be, I believe, document channels. Let's try that. Okay, so now we have, um, let's see, did that. We have the normal, but we don't have have the curvature so I'm kind of interested in the curvature as well uh, where was that setting that mesh maps okay there you go so it's the mesh maps actually export textures let's take a look at was that in the list I would hope it was PBR key mesh maps there we go all right, so now we have some details of um, that we can hopefully bring into here. So there's that. Quickly, gonna need to take a quick peek at um, how they load these. Where was that tutorial? Ah, there we go. So they're importing it, and all right. So now in here, I guess it's a base layer. So I think it could be a solid. Nope, that too many. All right. So now here we can load our normals and then custom channels it's interesting that uh, they also have in their tutorial um, they also have the curvature that's hidden on our hidden. Again, this being such an old video, I'm not entirely sure what version they're on. But um, but so basically, this would be this would be it. They don't show how that base layer got in there. I'm wondering if it's uh, right as you import it, because I had to add it. Uh, so, like for example, let's try and do a new mix. Alright, so no, I don't want to save them. And instead of plane, I want to import a custom model. My lockpick. Yeah, so there's nothing there, but in their case, as soon as they import it, um, Let's see if I, I don't think I jumped ahead, but uh, 
Yeah, so see it already had something in there when uh, when they started it with the base layer, but uh, not anymore. So this is what's cool, you know, you can like load the normals, you know, once you add, whoops, no, I want it to go to viewport, and uh, yeah, the only thing is you can only, the one thing that you can add is uh, the solid layer. So in here you can go to normals and load the normal, and we have, um, I think this could be it. And for, for again, for whatever reason, this is um, not tiling properly. What? Why the hell? You know, sometimes I just wish these developers could just get together and, you know, get on one page as a kind of a, um, you know, like how the internet is built. You know, you have some standards of, of doing certain things, but, you know, it's kind of a wild, wild west when it comes to these, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Why would that not be box projection tiling? Okay, so it's tiling. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, to rant, but <laughs> I kind of feel that way sometimes. Um, whenever there's a new thing coming, there's like, okay, you gotta, you gotta learn it. It's, it's not even like you know, you start from a basic set of things. I mean, con they have the concepts, right? So, sort of. But um, yeah, it's it's all you know can be a little frustrating, especially um, especially if you don't do it as a you know, kind of a full time job or you know daily. So um, all right, so we have that now. Um, unfortunately, there's no option for the curvature for whatever reason. Um, Yeah, you can't seem to load that in. Okay. Um, so, you know, something to look into. Why that's not available. Well, I'm curious if it can get something... Um, let's see, in local library... Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I do software engineering, so it's you know coming from a standardized kind of idea. <laughs> it's uh, uh, you know with some of these DC tools, it's you know they everybody has their own understanding of um, of what's what's usable, <laughs> what what's got some higher usability and what probably doesn't. Alright, so let's take a look at metal. Maybe we can try and apply something to this. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be something pretty basic, but let's do it with brass. So we have some brass applied to it. But how do we add some um, uh, kind of smart material? Oh, and, and yeah, exactly. That's 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 exactly the other thing, you know. All right, 
that. So let's see in here, surface, smart material. Let's try a smart material. Uh, sun damage purple, stained dusty black. Does this do anything? Yeah, I think it still needs the curvature to have in there. Unfortunately, I cannot find a way to load that. Um, well, anyways, it's uh, it's been an attempt. Hopefully, uh, yeah, exactly. We're just humans. Um, so I'll I'll try and do some digging, and uh, if um, if it's something that's doable, especially just using uh, these tools, you know, like uh, Blender X Normal and uh, and Mixer. To uh, to paint something, I'll uh, I'll definitely do a, a you know structured tutorial where you can actually um, uh, follow along without me rambling on, <laughs> complaining sometimes. But um, but yeah, so uh, gonna sh since you I haven't uh, I, I didn't really get to show you anything from uh, from my project. Uh, here's just a quick little. Um, a uh, little introduction. Um, so this is kind of my little level here where you can uh, you can do certain things. So uh, NPC interactions, of course, you'll be able to uh, to talk to some of these guys, and you know you have uh, some basic dialogues. Hopefully, you'll, you're able to read this, and uh, this is tied into the quest system. So during these dialogues, you you can be assigned. Uh, can be assigned quests. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's basic interactions. You know, you have to uh, um, have a backpack. And uh, let's see, knife. I got a knife and flashlight at least. Uh, there's um, um, so you know, just picking up certain items. Uh, you can also replenish your health, you know, with bread. So if I was to go in inventory and consume the bread, you'd uh, replenish health in case you uh, you get into a squabble. <laughs> um, let's see. So you know that's kind of the basics of inventory and interacting with NPCs. As I was telling you, there's various types of doors. You know, like uh, this is a door with a lockpick, and uh, if you don't have lockpicks, yeah, I guess you need to pick some lockpicks. And then the interaction kind of just works, uh, you know, like I was showing you earlier. Yeah, you have to place it in sp specific positions. There you go. So, so now the door, the door can open. Uh, that's again, that's a simple interaction. Well, yeah, survival adventure. Um, I mean, but you know, when I think of survival as more of these kind of games, like um, you know, the forest or Rust, where you have to like, like build stuff, where you have to like gather resources. So, so yeah, it's a little bit, um, uh, there's also, oh, actually, that's not the type of door I wanted to show. Um, and I'm wondering if this is actually active. Yeah, so this is another type of door that's got a code on it. Um, I think this one was zero, zero, zero. Yeah, there you go. So this is a proximity door. Um, the other thing that you can interact with is uh, actually I can show you how the pistol looks like. Uh, there's not enough space. I need to drop something, so I'm gonna drop the flashlight. Yeah. So the inventory also has a little bit of a base, uh, basic uh, weight system, so you can only carry so much. Right now it's pretty low, so it's not perfect. Um, there's an uh, area of the game where there's a bunker where most of the friendly survivors are going to be at. So, you know, one of them has uh, a, um, you know, an elevator. And there's an elevator to access the various floors in the bunker. So this is how that works. Um, yeah, exactly. Weight and volume. And uh, let's see. I hope B3 was the bottom level. I can't remember on, on this section. There we go. So uh, this is kind of how the how an elevator works, and uh, so that's also part of the game. 
there's some basic crafting where you can craft uh, like one of my plan is to craft a silencer for the weapon and I can actually show you how the weapon uh, also works and uh, and also uh, right now you can have um, two items and I guess I got stuck into this uh, uh, image there so I'm not sure why that one's not. Oh yeah, uh, my apologies. So basically, actually the yeah, so you can do a dual wielding, and I was thinking that I couldn't remember if the compass was I was using it on my right hand or my left hand, because um, I couldn't like I you know I was trying to equip them both, but um, I couldn't do that with the with the compass because the compass is in your right hand as well as is the um, um, the pistol so if I was to equip the pistol then uh, so basically the, the pistol is like this and um, you know with your regular ADS modes and um, kinda how it runs um, So I'm trying to get it sort of realistic looking to some extent. Um, and um, there's also like the uh, I was gonna I wanted to show you like the dual action stuff. Yeah, so so whenever you don't have anything equipped in your left hand, it would use both hands. Uh, you know, so so like that. But when you do have something in your left hand, so I'm hoping that I can equip the flashlight. So it would do like this, right? So um, you can uh, you can work both with the flashlight, and you can turn off the flashlight. There's like a, a secondary action for the for the left hand. Um, so. So if you put the flashlight away, it would go into into both hands using both hands for the weapon. And there's um, you know using both hands gives you a little bit better accuracy, both in this uh, ADS or uh, when you don't do it that way. Uh, so yeah, there's quite a few other uh, things that you can do in the game. I'm trying not to trigger that dude, but um, let's see, maybe we can. Oh shit, he saw me. But uh, so basically, what he does, he's he's not going to be able to. Uh, uh, his he he doesn't do any damage at the moment. So basically, what he does, he's gonna if he's oops now I think he's gonna be able to do some damage. Um, if he's at, at a certain distance, he's gonna uh, he's gonna use his his pistol and uh, and shoot you. Once he runs out of bullets, he's gonna chase you to try and like kill you with the knife. And um, and at this point, what you can do is if you don't have anything equipped, um, I believe was it uh, what was the kick? No, actually, this this was actually good testing because let me let me jump into game mode again. Um, because if you don't have anything equipped, it should have. Um, I should have been able to attack him. So kind of like that. So this is the a little bit of the melee when you're not equipped with anything, and then you can uh, stash the body um, so that uh, the other um, uh, the other NPCs or the other enemy NPCs, if they notice the body, they they would go into like a, a search pattern, you know. So they would start searching around and hey, uh, what's going on? What's going on? And um, but yeah, I guess that I had a little bit of an error there. When you don't have anything equipped, you should be able to attack. So I need to uh, I need to look into that. Uh, the one thing uh, across the level, there's going to be some items that can distract these guys. So for example, um, there's a mansion where kind of a lot of stuff is going to be can be revealed, and um, you can use some of items like this. And right now it's just disabled, but this would when you turn it on, it's going to um, it's going to make a noise and distract the um, 
the enemies you know so they're gonna come investigate and what you can do is um, you can do this so you can hide inside of one of these and you know you can look around and while that guy is inspecting the item um, he's gonna um, he's gonna be distracted right he's gonna be focusing on that and um, oh, come on I need to exit I guess I need to fix that too huh uh, so yeah, there's there's some of those items that can uh, distract the um, the enemy NPCs, and um, let's see what else. Uh, there's a couple of mini games in here. Uh, I need to get rid of this dude. So you know, just a kind of a, a little bit of fun for the player if they if they. Um, come across the game so you know simple stuff like this or like a uh, like an arcade mini game that uh, you know can distract the player and uh, there's also some other things for example like um, and this is going to be tied into the game itself and the storyline um, like some dangerous items like this where um, you would um, I mean of course this this the uh, the mask comes later but uh, you use uh, your your hands to kind of push these into play to disable some of these uh, some of these items so And so that yeah, I mean that's kind of uh, it in a, in a nutshell. There's um, let's see, I'm not sure if there's anything as far as mechanics that I haven't shown. And as far as the environment, I can quickly show you some of that uh, just to give an idea of um, um, this is something that I was focusing on over the week for. Uh, just I was talking about earlier when I started the stream about uh, optimization and such so um, so I was trying to get this to work as best as possible and um, I'm kinda hitting somewhere around 60 frames per second now in this open world or like the the foresty open more demanding you would think area of the game so right now this this takes a little bit longer because it loads you know at, at all the levels that are involved in the project and um, come on you can do it I also have a pretty old uh, <laughs> computer <laughs> There we go. Um, yeah, and this is something that I've been um, experiencing with Unreal lately. I'm not sure if there uh, it's a bug or something. I'm. Um, uh, but whenever I jump into game mode, it, it works fine. But yeah, it, it it's crawling right now. Not sure if it's also due to the streaming, but uh, it 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 started happening after it, after I installed the latest uh, update for um, for my graphics card. I'm not sure if that's part of it. But um, but yeah, this is uh, this is some of the world. This is kind of how it looks. Um, so yeah, see, like I'm not entirely sure why it just slows down so badly. I'm thinking it might be rebuilding. Um, it might be rebuilding the runtime virtual texture, so that could be it. But but yeah, it's it's um, 
you know it's decent like I, I can play dying light on it <laughs> so uh, it's 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 not a horrible computer but the processor is f four or five years old I would think so it's pretty outdated like a I five a four core i5 which is way behind the times so but yeah this is kind of how the the entire world looks like um, you know what I'm not entirely sure I never I should should have closed this uh, you know there's also bridge so no I'm not sure I'm not sure what it is uh, it's uh, it's something that has to deal with the engine or the graphics card uh, because sometimes it does this and most of the times it doesn't it just um, I'm not sure why it's doing it now but um, yeah because like once you jump into game mode it it works um, a little bit better I'm not sure if it's also the streaming but it takes forever to load into game mode so um, yeah anyways but um, and yeah the, the the lighting is messed up like around the trees and also since I'm here since there's also how the um, how the main menu is like um, you know, I have a basic save and load game functionality implemented that I'm going to expand on. Um, but yeah, so as you can tell, you know, the lighting looks a little bit more consistent here, but at the same time, the performance is terrible and is, um, I'm not sure exactly what, what's going on. Once I restart the engine, it works fine, but, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely... Um, I'm thinking it might be just something with uh, NVIDIA drivers. They've always been kludgy. So, but but yeah, that's it in a nutshell. So, and um, yeah, whoa, uh, this has been going on for a couple of hours now. <laughs> but anyways, so um, hopefully I'll see you around. I'll I'll try and do another stream tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to um, uh, to do a little bit better on the I'll, I'll I'll do some digging hopefully tonight if uh if I get around to it on that um uh, on the mixer and uh hopefully maybe I'll be able to create something with uh with that lockpick uh um um you know kind of figure figure that out how to do that uh so so yeah uh thanks again for stopping by and um uh, yeah, there's like I said, you know, there's quite a few things to fix around here, and um, to figure out why this is again. I, I probably need to restart the engine because it's uh, bogged down by something. And uh, and yeah, nice to meet you too. So thank you, thanks again for stopping by, and um, um, have a good uh, have a good evening. I, I assume. So uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll see you around. All right, take care. Bye.